scientists climb into Siberian sinkhole. In July of 2014, three massive sinkholes mysteriously appeared in northern Siberia, leaving scientists scratching their heads as they looked for an explanation as to why so many sinkholes of such large proportions appeared out of nowhere. Later that same year, a team of Russian scientists with the Russian Center of Arctic Exploration led by Vladimir Pushkarev ventured into the bottom of one of the sinkholes in the search for some answers. The sinkhole was so deep that the team had to use ropes to propel themselves 34 feet to the bottom, where they took probes, measurements and samples and attempted to get to the bottom of what could have caused the sinkholes and whether we should be alarmed at their appearance. Although they have not been able to definitively say what caused the three initial sinkholes, whatever it is did not stop with just three. In the years following the expedition to the sinkhole floor, at least 15 more have appeared across Siberia. These holes appear as deep caverns and funnels and are of an ever-increasing magnitude, leading scientists to study them even more intensely as they hunt for the source. The prevailing theory of the sinkhole creation is that methane is building up underneath the Siberian permafrost covering the Earth's surface, and then it releases in a colossal burst that causes the formation of the gaping caverns. Many think that drilling for gas reserves and other such activities in the region could be triggering this methane buildup, leading to the concerning number of explosions in recent years, while others attribute the cause to instability created in the tundra as a result of global warming, and still others believe it to be a combination of the two. Although the true cause of the creation of these sinkholes has yet to be determined, one thing is for sure, the force behind these massive openings in the Earth's surface must be genuinely great. One of the largest and most recent sinkholes measured over 30 meters deep and 20 meters across, meaning that only an incredibly powerful explosion of some sort could have created it. Evgeny Chuvalin, the leader of an expedition into this newest crater and researcher at Skolkovo Institute of Science and Technology's Center for Hydrocarbon Recovery, has been attempting to find the root cause of the craters for years. He said the following, Right now, there is no single accepted theory on how these complex phenomena are formed. It is possible that they have been forming for years, but it is hard to estimate the numbers. Since craters usually appear in uninhabited and largely pristine areas of the Arctic, there is often no one to see and report them even now. Craters are mostly found by accident during routine, non-scientific helicopter flights or by reindeer herders and hunters. This means that there could be more sinkholes on top of the ones that we've already discovered. Further muddling the scientists' search for an explanation is the fact that the sinkholes turn into small lakes relatively quickly after appearing, meaning that if samples are to be taken from the bottom, scientists must not only stumble upon the hole in the Siberian permafrost by chance, but then also move quickly enough to obtain samples and study the formation before it fills with water. Although continued study of the craters leads teams closer and closer to a solution with every sample taken, for now we are simply left to wonder at the massive forces that could be behind such an impressive explosion, and what it might mean for us humans and the planet that we live on. Rethinking the Neanderthal Cave in France When you think about a Neanderthal, what first comes to your mind? perhaps an ancient and unintelligent human. Well, you might want to think the latter part. Deep underground, scientists were able to discover some dark caves in France's Aveyron Valley. However, they were not just any regular caves. They were man-made structures over 176,000 years old, which was about 150,000 years older than any structure that had been uncovered before. That could only mean one thing. They were built by none other than the Neanderthal. This fascinating discovery changes the entire way that we see these ancient hominids. Whereas we previously associated them more closely with primates than humans, it turns out that they might be closer to us than we expected. But just how was it determined that Neanderthals were capable of building such caves? It all started in 1990, when explorer Bruno Kowalszewski squeezed through a tunnel to arrive at the Brunekel Cave. After crossing animal bones and water pools in their path, 
you finally stumbled upon a startling scene of crushed up staglomites that were arranged into two ring shapes. All around these rings were indications of burnt bones. Immediately, he suspected that this was not naturally occurring. But when did this exactly take place? The carbon dating of a burnt bare bone revealed that it was about 47,600 years ago, which made it older than any discovered cave painting. Though it seemed impossible, that put it right in the age of the Neanderthal. To further prove this, another cave lover named Sophie Verhaden decided to uranium date the stalagmites. It turns out that the stalagmites were crushed up by people more than 176,000 years ago, which was further back than anyone had anticipated. While it was never determined what these Neanderthals were trying to do, it was evident that they used fire, were capable of building things, and most likely had tools by their side. Suddenly, they might look a lot more familiar and less unintelligent than before. Perhaps humans were never so different from the humble Neanderthal after all. The Vreda Fort Crater 13 The Vreda Fort Crater is another fascinating discovery by scientists. It was discovered over 60 years ago. It is situated in the Republic of South Africa. It signifies a unique geological phenomenon that is of international significance. The Vredefort Crater Dome, among other things, displays an exceptional level of beauty with a wonderful level of biodiversity with a remarkable plant and animal population. It is believed by many that the Vredefort Crater Dome could potentially be a tourist attraction because of its scenic beauty. It has led scientists to now believe that impact cratering is a fundamental geological process that affects especially the inner planets of the solar system and their moons. It is believed by astrophysicists that these scars were probably caused by the impacts of meteorites, comets, and asteroids from outer space. Although there were not many impact craters found on the surface of the Earth, currently over 160 of these craters have been discovered in our world today. The three largest of all of the craters are the Sudbury Crater, which is about 200 kilometers and is located in Canada, the Chicxulub, which is roughly the same size and is located in Mexico, and finally, the Vredefort, which is approximately 400 kilometers and is located in South Africa. Evidently, to scientists, geophysicists, and astrophysicists, the Vredefort Dome is one of the few craters on Earth. It also represents the world's largest and the world's oldest impact crater. It also is the best recognizable, the easiest and accessible structure of this kind. It still displays most of the features typical of impact structures. It is believed that the Vredefort impact event happened near the end of the Great Accretion period of the planets of the solar system. This was thought to be the period planets were being built from the accretion of dust and rubble and ice revolving around the sun. It is further believed that the coming together of this entailed material caused massive impact that led to the accumulation of a multitude of craters that were still visible on the surface of the planets situated closer to the sun that were not covered by water or frozen gases. The Vreda Fort Crater has now officially been recognized by the World Body of Cultural Heritage. Plans have been put in place to make it a tourist attraction for people because of the beautiful surrounding environment. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.